Hi, my name is Sheldon Smith. I'm the CEO of Holmes, Kim, Price, Crodel, and Smith. <clears throat> we started out trying to automate documents, but to do more than just find and replace. Macros have been around a long time in Microsoft Word, but we're aiming to make it more simple for attorneys to get work done. Um, the real power in Documate and Woodpecker is their ability to connect to the cloud and allow you to integrate other applications with them. <clears throat> to do that, we started by making a website. Um, it was surprisingly easy and it's something any attorney could do. In just a couple of hours, they have a professional looking website that has all of our information on it. This website is a stepping stone to being able to share forms with our client and streamline the process for onboarding new customers. The documents that we dealt with specifically were estate planning documents. We got these forms, we got these documents off of Westlaw forms. Um, we didn't pick particularly complex documents because we really wanted to emphasize the ability to connect applications together and leverage them as one cohesive unit. Um, within the firm, I, Joe Crodel, and Garrett Holmes worked on the Woodpecker side of things, and Philip Kim and Amy Price worked on the document side. Hi, my name is Joe Crodell, and I'm the CFO of our firm. And along with Garrett Holmes and Sheldon Smith, we uh, automated documents with Woodpecker. So I automated a power of attorney document. And um, some of the favorite features that we um, highlighted I, or noticed, I guess, were the highlighting feature in, within a document. It made it really easy to select which area you wanted to manipulate. Um, also, the ability to archive clauses and conditions made it easy to use across different documents. Um, also, if you had any troubles, uh, customer service was very quick and friendly to uh, answer any questions. And um, also, um, real-time changes within the document um, is really helpful to see how it works. So if you are working on the side and you see a change within the document, it, Helps, it kind of helps you figure out if you're doing it correctly, um, which was good for first time users. Um, so, um, also, another thing I noticed was on in the pane on the right, uh, top right corner, there's an X to where you can close out of something and it can be really close to another button and it's hard to pick which one you uh, are selecting. So I had trouble with that. Um, but let me share my screen and I'll show you what I worked on. Okay, so I automated the durable power of attorney form, and at first, I it was really easy to uh, find things like the name of the principal and the agent to uh, kind of use as a fill and replace um, tool. But then also, I learned how to uh, make all of these different powers optional. So if a client comes in and say they like don't own any real property, but there's an option for, you know, designated powers relating to real property, they could select no here. And then that clause or that power would not be included. Um, but so I've got some of the fields filled in here and I'll see if it'll populate correctly. Uh, I just have my name and like my roommate's names here, but then, so if we want to select the fields, uh, we'll just click yes, because I created, um, single select fields where it'll ask if you want to include a certain power or not. And so if I were to select no here, it wouldn't include that clause. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. So I'll click populate and the general info will fill in. So this allows an attorney to um, interview a client and then customize a power of attorney for that client depending on their needs um, and eliminate some of the work that's required in drafting uh, specific provisions for each specific person if they have a general need. Um, but as you can see all these different powers have filled in as I clicked, you know, as is yes, as in all of them. Now, if I were to put no on some of them, then they wouldn't be there. Um, but then if you go down, I have it highlighted too. It might be difficult to see. There. But there, and so then at the bottom here, uh, more uh, just simple fill and replace information. And then, um, but other than that, all the other powers have filled in. Um, so if I, if your client in another, um, issue I had with Woodpecker was if you save a clause in the clause library, 
Um, the format is kind of unpredictable. It'll fill in sometimes like this or sometimes um, unbolded or with a lot of spaces or little spaces like this one. And so that was one complaint I had. It could potentially be user error, but um, but after, after you meet with your client, you'll have an idea of what they need from their document and then you'll be able to um, customize. <clears throat> so where Joe used how a um, complicated document that requires a lot of attorney input simplifies that process by listing the powers you can um, accept. The use case that I tackled was a little bit more simple document where it's just a um, healthcare directive. But because of that, I tried to design it in a way where the client could almost fill the form out themselves. So I'll demonstrate to you um, the process that I use. <clears throat> so we start in Clio, where most uh, attorneys would be working. You can go over here and you can add a task. Um, so I've keyworded this task to start a um, job on Zapier. <clears throat> So I name it, this name is special. This is what makes it um, work. And I assign it to the matter. I made a test matter. So I'll save this task. After this is saved, then it will queue an email that will be sent to me. You can imagine if this was a client, they would get an email out of blue from their attorney. They've reached out and said, hey, I want a healthcare directive. You're the attorney, you go and you put this task in and it will automate sending them the email to get them started on this onboarding process. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see here this email has arrived um, and it has a link to this form. So I click here, you can imagine again, this would be a client working through this. They would get an email from their attorney. Um, I used Google Forms here. Initially we tried to use Clio Grow, um, but Clio Grow really wasn't very sophisticated for integrating with other applications. So I used Google Forms instead. Overall it worked pretty well, but it does have some deficiencies that make it a little bit difficult, specifically passing values into it um, from Clio. So you can start here, there's definitions. The client would go in, they would put their name, um, city they live in. So these are all fields that will relate back to the form that they're submitting. Um, the state that they live in, county. And then we start having some specific questions that are related to this healthcare directive. So for these, I'll just do, um, these would be either or, either of, these questions, either of these answers are correct. Now here for hospice care, if a client says no, this is something an attorney would need to address. Um, so for sake of demonstration, I'll say no there. Additional concerns, no. <clears throat> um, you can des designate additional um, authorizations. And if the client said, hey, I need more than three, they can indicate this here. And that's also part of the automation process. Um, one other glitch, using Google Forms, these values need to be passed through to be able to connect it back to Clio, but there's no way to do it in a way where the client doesn't see it. So it's a little bit of a downside here. Okay. So you can imagine now, as a client, you've just submitted this form, and the attorney then gets a notification in their tasks that this has been submitted. So I had to refresh that. So it says review client healthcare directive. Um, so what we did on the back end is we used Woodpecker to take the information that was submitted on that form, populate it into a document, and then upload it back into Clio. Now, whenever I filled out that form, I kind of mentioned that there were a few places where um, the attorney needed to do something if the client answered a particular way. So you can see that I set up triggers that there are tasks now for this attorney. So that way there's no, oh, they've got to look through the document and make sure everything's correct. The, the intake process has automated all of that and the attorney knows check off these boxes and this document's ready to go. Um, so you can see these here and if you go to matters um, underneath this client in documents um, the populated document has been uploaded. Now one glitch that I particularly like is it's hard to name it and have it be .pdf um, so you'd have to download and open it but where I had to do that you'd be able to see that it's um, properly um, filled in. So that, that was uh, another use case that we worked on being able to do something like that. You can imagine as an attorney, um, this has been completely streamlined. So you don't have to worry about simple questions that you just have to ask a client and then check them off little boxes. You can just send them to the client, let them answer them themselves, and then you can get back to work. My name is Garrett Holmes and I'm our chief marketing officer for our law firm. Uh, much like Sheldon and Joe, I used uh, Woodpecker and so I just want to give an example of a different kind of document than what we saw 
uh, that Joe used. So the document that uh, I automated was a uh, will, last will and testament. And I've put in a few of the fields here, uh, but it's a different kind of document and Woodpecker was able to allow it to uh, have the kind of personalization and customization uh, that every will needs because uh, every person has different things that they want to include. Uh, whereas the uh, other document was selecting clauses. This is putting in people's personal wishes into what they want, uh, as well as the names of the people that they want to uh, leave their property to. And so uh, one thing that I was able to do was uh, be able to use the conditional fields and logic to uh, make this easier uh, for somebody as they as they go through. So uh, I've put in a couple fields here. So put in the name, uh, Oklahoma County, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, for marital status, you can say married or unmarried, and it's going to dictate uh, what the following clause is going to be. So you can put a spouse name. And then your spouse referred to as. And that'll be consistent throughout the document. Uh, and from here, you can select number of kids uh, with all kinds of choices for uh, the number of kids. And uh, we can see the uh, different names that you can input. And then also uh, being able to have uh, these different articles that pop up if there, if there are kids. If uh, this was a person who was unmarried or they didn't have kids, it would completely change the document and would make this article uh, that we'll see here uh, not pop up. From here, you can select the primary heir as well as their pronouns to be consistent. Uh, and then here, using a multi-select tool, people can select their personal property. And so uh, if this is a document that uh, a firm uses quite frequently, they can know what kind of things are generally included in a will. And so one thing that they're able to do is select the different uh, things that they want to see included. So household furnishings, uh, clothing, personal effects, uh, jewelry, or whatever else is relevant to them. Uh, and if there are further things, they can wish to uh, say yes. Do you have any unlisted personal property that isn't found within the list? And then they can list something else that they may, may have that they want to see included. Uh, you can also add secondary error as well as uh, other terms that can be uh, included that uh, Joe also went over. And so by populating here, we can see that uh, it gives the customization uh, fairly easily for somebody to be able to uh, have the different fields that they need for different names of people, different names of property, uh, very easily into the document. Uh, a couple of things that we noted just in terms of using Woodpecker, uh, just as, from a firm perspective, is that uh, it's very useful if you're gonna use these documents uh, a lot. If you're not gonna use these kind of documents very often, then uh, it may be better to uh, not go with this kind of autom uh, automation, uh, especially when you look up some of the pricing that Woodpecker has. Uh, they have different pricing options when it comes to uh, how many templates you're gonna use, how many different documents you're gonna use, uh, and it can really scale up very quickly. Uh, if you're doing a lot of the same kind of document, if you did a lot of wills, uh, then this would be something that would be very useful. But if you're a small firm who maybe doesn't do this uh, that often, then it may just be able to save money and uh, save some time by uh, just using a Word document and just adding and deleting because you're already having to personalize so much uh, in a will anyway. And so those are some of our thoughts and uh, general overview of uh, Woodpecker as a whole. Hi, I'm Philip Kim, and 
I am the chief operations officer of our firm and I used Documate uh, to generate a durable power of attorney. We'll go ahead and share my screen and show you. So the document people know, but uh, generally you create an interview and our idea for the estate planning package, which included a will, a durable power of attorney and an advanced directive was to create a central interview that would have offshoots depending on uh, what information is needed. So on this previous page, it asks what documents do you need and the client could then select a will, an advanced directive, or a durable power of attorney. And then it would progress into the next general information page, entering your name and general information that will be applicable to all three documents. And then there are some question logic uh, branches within this general uh, interview. Uh, for example, at the bottom of this one, uh, it sh if you selected, it shows the type of property holdings that appear on the durable power of attorney when you select yes, when you ask, do you own property? And then if you selected you were married, it would take you to the next page and so on and so forth. Uh, my idea for the durable power of attorney, uh, if so here's our document for the durable power of attorney. Uh, it with the word add in. So it logs into document. You can insert these variables into your document uh, as needed. And my idea for a durable power of attorney, let's say your client is not married. There's a field showing uh, my spouse with the spouse's first name, spouse's last name. Um, but it also shows this agent uh, field in the event that they selected that they were not married and connecting back to the interview. And this is uh, just in case. So there were some complications with trying to integrate um, a general interview with all three documents. But if you selected durable power of attorney, it would automatically ask you for your agent. And if you selected you weren't married that the agent the agent's name would uh, take the place of the spouse and so whenever you are done with your interview you go ahead and run it and if you select durable power of attorney you can go ahead and enter the information and so for right here when you say you just uh, you own property and you, let's say you have real property, commodities and options, and a trust. In this field, uh, it will uh, omit or add those uh, clauses relating to uh, your property holdings for a durable power of attorney. So like, let's say I selected And you sign at the end. Let's say I selected those three documents. Those three uh, property holdings. It generates the document once you finish uh, the interview. And it went ahead and filled in an estate clause, a, a commodity and options clause, and a real property clause. And Some good things about uh, Document is their customer service. So you're able to uh, you're able to contact someone, and there's a human on the other side who's able to answer your questions in the event that you uh, ran into some trouble. Uh, we ran into some trouble because whenever you create a document and we asked them if it was possible, but even though I selected just durable power of attorney on the interview, 
it went ahead and generated all three documents. And we were trying to figure out a way to create an interview and centralize the general information and create offshoots of those um, and create separate documents, but it doesn't seem like there's an active way to uh, create the inter a centralized interview with three separate documents like we envisioned. But then again, I did see on Slack that they're able to uh, do things on the back end that um, we might not be able to on the user side in creating these documents. Hi, I'm Amy Price. I'm our firm's chief communications officer and I worked on Documate. I'm gonna kind of give a little step-by-step -step of how to use Documate. Now, the first thing you do is you go through your training, which is a mix of live session and then videos. The live session for me was the most helpful because you actually had a person go through Documate, like go through the questions and how to use all of the features. And that was extremely helpful. Now, once you go through that training, your first step is to find a form. I worked on the will and the advanced directive. So for example, the will, you look at the wills form and it's just a blank form where you need to fill in for your specific client. You're gonna go through and you're gonna make a list of all the blanks. So what is the client's name? What is their spouse's name? Do they have any children? What are those names? The address, et cetera. You have all those questions and you just make a list of those and what you need to be answered. After you compile your list of questions that need to be answered by the client, you are going to go into Documate. Okay, so here we are inside Documate. This is what it's going to look like right when you log in. You're going to have your workflow. So this is right here, our previous one that we actually worked on. But when you're new, this is what it, you're going to see. So for example, let's make a question of what is your name? You're gonna type out that question. You're gonna select a form of how you want them to answer. So here I want them to be able to write it out. And then you're gonna name that question. So there we go, client name. We're going to do another question and for example here we have so many options of the form that you can have your client answer and so there could be a drop down box there can be a text area there can be a number yes no we'll do yes no are you married and then variable name is marriage status okay so these variables right here that i'm filling out client name, you want to do a personalized variable name so that later on when you need to fill in your form, you can easily find it and there's no mistake of what that is. So another thing that you can do with these questions is you can do question logic. So are you married was this question that we're gonna write, what is your spouse's name? Now, this question, variable name, we can add question logic too. So, meaning we're going to show it if marriage status is yes. So, document also, along with the question logic, it has page logic. So, I wrote out this question Do you have children? I want them to answer yes or no, and I named it children's status. And so, I'm going to add another page which I did here and I named it children's names. Now I'm gonna show another feature document does is repeating items. So the item name is children. The initial question is, do you have, question, do you have children? Well, they already answered yes to that. So I wanna actually name this What are your children's names? Any other meaning, do they have any more children? So this is just a repeating feature if there's multiple things you want them to fill out. Now this, I just want it, its own page, the variable names. Okay, now we're gonna do page logic, which is right here. And we're gonna show page if 
Children's status is yes, because I don't want them to see this page if they don't actually have children. And then save that. So making the actual interview is fairly simple. It's to the point you just write out the question, you select a form in which you want them to answer, and then you assign a variable name. And if need be, you assign logic to the questions or the page. Now, I'll go to our actual interview that we made. And I'll go to, here's an example of what I just did, the children information. Do you have any children, any other children? And then we wanted their full names. Um, so these are all the pages. So here's will information. Who would you appoint as your personal representative upon your death? The full name. Now we got this question from one of the blanks on our template and we want them to write it out and we assign the name as a personal rep. And then of course there's more questions here. We assigned each one a variable name and that's practically it for actually making the document. Simple to the point. Another feature that document has that we haven't mentioned yet is the signature page. It's again, you just, it's one of the answer forms you can pick out, so signature. And we have this on our last page and they just sign it with their pen. And that is a cool feature that document has. Now, after you finish with actually making the interview, you're gonna go in all these variable names that we had right here. We're gonna go and put those into our template. Okay, here is my template. It's already been filled out, but I went through and I changed these so I can show you how to do it. So this is right here is what your template's gonna look like before you even mess with it. You're gonna open it up on Word and inside Word is here, right here, document tagger. And then you're just gonna log in. You have your API key, which is what allows you to go into those variables of the interview that you just made. So you're gonna run through your template and you're going to plug in all those answers that we just had the client fill out. So actually, let me sign in real quick. Okay. So right here, the last one testament, I want that to be the client name. So simple variables. Oh, look at that. Client name is right there. Client name, I want to standard and insert the variable. And then right here, I testator, a resident of blank. This is for county. I'm going to go find county in your list of variables county and then insert variable. Another thing is right here. I am married to spouse, first name, last name, who is referred to wife. I only want that to show up in the document if they said that they had a spouse. So that means I'm gonna go here to show phrase when, and they answered married is yes. I mean, this entire phrase right here will only pop up if they said they're married. And then for this paragraph right here that I have children, I added paragraph when, so it shows that entire paragraph only when they answered that children was yes. Now you can use this in whatever way you want. You can have more paragraphs pop up, less paragraphs. It just is a way to personalize the document for each and every client that you have. And then the the rest of the form is just filling out those questions that they answered. Okay, now that you've plugged in all of the variables into your document, you have your, I call it the coded document. So you're gonna save this and you're gonna go back into document and you're gonna upload it into the output document. So here we already have our files uploaded, the durable power of attorney, advanced directive, and final will. Now what these all are is what it was just showing it's this, we just uploaded these documents right back into Document. So that means that the client, they're gonna get the link to fill out this interview. They're gonna answer those questions and then Document is just gonna go ahead and insert those variables into that blank template. Something I didn't mention is before I even added in the variables into the document, I ran through my interview multiple times because some, you can't see live time as you make a change in the actual interview, how it will affect the look of it on the client's end. So I definitely did a lot of save and runs right here just to see how it looked on the client's end. And I did that multiple times, which 
I'm not a fan of the going back and forth, having to save and then run and go through your entire interview again before seeing how it looks. I felt like there was a lot of back and forth there. But once you've gone through and you the interview looks how you want it to look. So here's just an example of what our interview looks like. So what documents do you need? I'll just say a will. Um, fill out. I'm just going to fill this out really quickly. Okay, so when the client is filling out their interview, they're going to have, are you married? No. Do you have children? Yes. I'm just saying that. Do you have, do you own property? So this right here, yes. We have page logic where another page will show up because I press yes. And here, do you own property? If I say no, nothing pops up. If I say yes, all of this pops up. Now, do you have children? The only reason this page is popping up is because I previously said, yes, I do have children. So here, you're just going to write in the child's name. And if you have another kid, put the kid's name in. Okay, continue. So you're going to make the client can make sure that they filled in the right name. They can either edit it or delete it. And then you're going to continue through answering the questions. So I went ahead and just answered the questions off camera, but at the very end of the client's interview, they're going to have a chance to review all of their questions and they'll see it all at once. And signature, kids names continue. And this is the view of what the attorney will have, but it shows which files were just produced and then who it's going to email it to. So you can assign it to yourself and then send document and then that will go right into your email. When you log into your email and you find the final will. Now, in a lot of these, I didn't fill out the questions correctly. I just sped through it, but it has filled out the questions and it's given me a final will. So just a few things I noticed about document issues that I didn't necessarily like is there was a little, I felt like there was a lot of going back and forth. Um, I didn't like that I had to keep, I had to save and then run through the entire interview to see the changes that I just made. So there was no lifetime change such as what Woodpecker offers. I did like Document though. It was very simple, very easy to use. I would recommend it for a smaller firm um, for just basic, simple. I feel like a bigger firm might want a little more sophisticated system, but for a beginner, Document was really easy to use. Another thing that I did notice that wasn't so good is the saving. I would press save and it wouldn't necessarily show that I had saved it. The, for example, the question logic, if it says show if the Document needed, if the document needed was a will, I would save that and then I would come back later and look at it and it wouldn't have that. It would have it changed even though it was correct on the other end, like the actual interview was correct. It's just when you looked at it, it didn't, it didn't seem like it had the right logic in there. And I don't know if that was a user error or what, but that is something that I noticed. Another issue was I didn't have the right coding done on my will meaning I had a paragraph for children show up even though they answered no for the children. And I couldn't figure that out for the longest time. Um, Philip had to go in and explain because to me it was not obvious what my error was. And as I was looking through, it didn't make sense and it stalled me for a while. Um, that also is probably just a user error and I just don't know how to understand that. The overall process of using Document was really easy to approach. The training made it a lot more understandable, and the actual process was simple. There were multiple steps involved, but each step itself was easy and easy to understand, easy to fix if there were an error. There were a few minor tweaks in there, but looking at the entire process start to finish, I would definitely recommend this to another firm if this is their first time automating documents. So in conclusion, kind of, our overall view of this um, document was pretty easy, pretty intuitive. You can see kind of a smaller to mid-sized firm really thriving on a technology like that, even solo practitioners, whereas Woodpecker um, offer a lot more functionality. And now that's not to say it wasn't simple either. Um, while you're operating in there, it was pretty cohesive, pretty easy to get things done at a very nice document library. We can kind of keep things in, all one, in one centralized place and share that within your firm. Um, so Woodpecker kind of 
if you're a solo practitioner, you could take a flow like what, what I demonstrated. Um, when your time is that valuable, it could be worth it for you to invest into Woodpecker because you need to be efficient with your time. And on the flip side, if you're a large firm that has a lot of volume and you have a big IT department, it could be worth paying someone um, to automate those kinds of processes so that way you can be more consistent with the way that you demonstrate to a client. Um, some issues that we had working remotely, just the nature of these, especially if you're trying to integrate documents together or use a form that has different questions and then connect that to things. It's a little bit diff difficult to do that when you're working remotely, when you have to send messages and kind of work asynchronously. Um, that was one challenge that we um, had trouble with. Something that we do better next time around, a lot of it's just jumping into it and getting started. Uh, personally, I don't really have any specifics of things that I would do differently. Um, when you're working with this kind of new software, it's just spending time in it and getting your hands dirty to figure out about it. Um, so what we want to brag about, we're really excited about the way that in Document that we integrated all the documents together in one package. We feel like that that really leverages the strength of these, where it's not just one document that's finding a place. It's actually a package of things that are all together in one cohesive unit, and you can send it to clients as an interview. Um, similarly with what we did with Woodpecker, you could see with what Joe did, you took a, he took a complex document that had a lot of options and simplified it where the attorney can go through yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, it reduces a lot of the errors that you would normally make. Another example, whenever Garrett worked on the will, that's a customized document that's really personal to people. Um, so Woodpecker allowed to take, the, to take the routine cookie cutter things, automate those, but still leave a lot of flexibility for customization. And then lastly, with the project that I showed you, taking a very simple form where it would just be a 15, 20 minute task for an attorney, but you can automate it into one form that gets sent to a client. That way attorney's valuable time is saved and clients don't pay as much money for things that are really just checking boxes on a document and getting it signed and sent off. Thanks.